main event ended up being a historic one. Man. No need to. Hey, no man. need to. Hey. No need to. I'm hype right now. Podcast, man. 38 years old, baby. Doing it for the old folks. I ain't going to front, man. I, I wrote him off a little while ago. I feel bad saying it. Everyone did. I, I yeah. be, it wouldn't be me if I didn't say yeah. that. I, I, you know, because I feel like I wrote him off and I just was like, all right, yeah, he's on his last leg. I'm like, wait a minute. No need to fall last night. He won. No need to fall last night. He won. What? Hey. what? Fight, of the, fight of the year. That's supposed to be me and Errol Smith Jr. What you mean? You know, like, and he's and he's continuing to do it against young guys. You know what I mean? It's like he's not just doing this against anybody. On his, usually, when you're on your last leg out, you just like I'll take a fight here and there. Like he's taking big challenges and conquering them, which is awesome. Yeah, guy he fights yesterday, undefeated champion. I mean, yeah, he looked explosive last night. It was exciting. Yeah. It was just hyped up. It's like he went back 10 years. Oh. He looked good last night, man. Yeah. Look, counter, he looked good. His yeah. counter counters were on the money early. And then even when he started to maybe start to take that next step and be a little more offensive, man, he hit him with some shots. That left hand, <laughs> that the first knockdown, that might have been one of the quickest left hands I've seen put somebody down. <laughs> it was, I was like, wait a second, did he get hit? <laughs> they showed the replay in slow motion. It's like, ah, that's when we need the slow motion. What's crazy is I, I kind of felt the same thing. I was like, I had to rewind. I was like, wait a minute. What did he get with? It was, it was a fast, hey, that's the Filipino flash. Yeah, true. He's a legend, man. I, I was so excited following that fight. Like, you know, I, just to spiel on him for a minute, I remember when he won his first title, he, Vic Darchinian was the man in 2007. Mm-hmm. You know, he was the the knockout artist little guy and he was getting main event dates on Showtime and Nonito came in as a replacement and iced him, iced him with it. And from then on, it was the, the birth of a legend. Yeah. And he goes on to win all these great fights. He knocks out Montiel on HBO and and then he wins in all these divisions, becomes already a Hall of Famer almost 10 years ago. But then he falls in love with his power. He gets he loses to Rigan Diaw, goes through this this really bad, you know, yeah. lull and down in his career. And to me, last night was a celebration of Nonito Donaire and his yeah. beautiful career. It, it reminded me of, uh, you know, uh, uh, when Roberto Duran fought Davey Moore and, and just, you know, put on a great performance in the garden. It was like because Duran had already been knocked out by Hearns. He had done the no mas. And so people had written him off. And now he fights this guy who's undefeated, who, you know, Davey Moore, Nordino, Bali, they may not be the, you know, pound for pound or the elite of the elite, but they were undefeated young world champions. And Nonito comes in and just has one of the best performances of his career. And it reminded me of when Cotto beat up Sergio Martinez, just these guys who have beautiful careers and they go through this time where it looks like you write them off. And then in the end, they, they come out and prove their greatness once again, just, you know, what a performance by Nonito Donaire. His yeah. power at those weights is, is legendary, and um, I was just happy for him. I'm really I mean, happy for him. I mean, even go back to, we always say, you know, to take away lessons, you prefer it be in a win than a loss. But even in the loss he has in 2019 to Inoue, like, it was a great fight. He busted Inoue's orbital bone. So it's like, it, was, it wasn't like he just got blown out and we're like, yeah, you know, he's old. Just kind of pitch him aside. But, no, that that was great last night. So the, the one... I wouldn't even call it a controversy, but the one thing is the second knockdown mm-hmm. that the bell, you, you can hear the bell go and then the punch lands. I think we all kind of feel similar that they were exchanging. So it might not have been as egregious if it wasn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm an advocate of uh, Jack Reese and I, it's just coincidence that I'm speaking on referees again this, this week, but I'm an advocate for for uh, Jack Reese. I really like his uh, refereeing. I think that he controls the 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 ring and the in the action. He's I, th- I feel like he steps in when he's supposed to. I feel like he always looks out for the safety of both fighters and things like that. And so when the knockdown clearly happens after the bill, I thought that Jack made the responsible right decision to call, and that's that's a very quick and hard decision to make. And I don't think he missed the bill. I think he understood that the bell rung. But they were exchanging and they were finishing that exchange. Jack Reese is solid. And to me, he made the right decision by by calling that a knockdown and counting. And, uh, you know, that's kind of it just was kind of just in the motion. It happened that the bell was ringing at that point in time. I I do know that 
And he was right there for it. A lot of refs understand when they hear that clap, that it's 10 seconds. Let me inch a little closer. Let me get get ready to step in. And it just was one of those things where they were they were finishing an exchange. Their rings. And then right after that, the punch comes, you know, so I, I, I do understand where the controversy could come from. But to me, it was the right decision. I, I feel like I'm unbiased in saying that. Um, I don't feel like I'm, I'm biased for for Jack Reese and feeling like, you know, he can do no wrong. And I'm also not biased on on, on um, the Filipino Flash's behalf and saying, you know, I want him to win the fight. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of his. We go, I go as far back as Vic Darchinian went with with uh, with uh, Don Nonito. Like back then, it was like, who is this kid? And he just kind of blew up after that fight and so he just has always been one of those guys that I always look forward to watching fight and then like I said going, when I say I, I wrote him off I just that's 2007 when he blew up this is this is god dang it's 14 years later and and we're still talking about this kid you know uh, outside of him who else are we really talking about but Mayweather you know there's not yeah. too many guys you know the rest of us were just showing up on the scene you know what I mean so that's why, uh, you know, I, I just feel like I'm not biased and feeling like that was the right call. I think that it was. And I just think that it was it happened to be the timing. And uh, that's how it goes sometimes. It, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit that it was after the bell. Like he hit him, he goes down. And I was like, wait a second. The bell had rung. I was like, how is he just like in a heap right now on the ground? And then uh, he was he was in bad shape though after the second knockdown. He kind of couldn't really figure out how to get to the corner and where he was going. And obviously some of that was confusion because. The round had ended, so Donaire was kind of in the corner. So there was, but he was in bad shape, and then and Donaire, you know, nailing the coffin after that. But Carson, go ahead, Sean, Car go ahead. Man. Sean always saying uh, one of those cases of know your know your ref. Jack yeah. Reese gave him more than enough chances because hey, <laughs> Jack Reese said, "Go here, go there." Yeah, Walk hit him with a cha cha Walk slide. To me. Hey, yeah. I would have been like, "Yeah, man, that's it." <laughs> Jack Reese gave him. <laughs> He, I, senses, man. Honestly, I we we talk about stoppages or kind of that it's there's not really like a clear yeah. book on how you do it. But it, yeah. and, uh, like you said, if he had stopped there right there, I wouldn't have had any issue. I wouldn't have been like, whoa, that's way too early because he's like was all <laughs> over the place. So I'm like, yeah, I, I could see it. It's kind of like new protocol. And it's not it's not new because this is 2021. It's I think maybe 2018, they started to implement that new system of make a guy walk and give him directions. And, and if he's coherent and follows your directions, that means he can continue to fight. Of course, along with him following directions, you got to make sure that he's stepping correctly and things like that. So, again, when you talk about Jack Reese giving this guy directions and, hey, come here, go there, come here. He's, he's very clear and concise. <laughs> and I need come to me, you know. So he said, "Give me your gloves," and he had his gloves like off. So he's like, "No, no, no. give me it's your like, gloves." <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I would have waited on. Yeah, yeah I, no. I, I, I would have been fine either way. But then, and, and listen, this is why I, this is why I asked, um, uh, uh, Sean, who his coach is, because a lot of times you get to the point that you no know, needles that a lot of guys cannot pull it together. They can't pull it together through an entire training camp. Even especially when you get that age, your body breaks down throughout camp, recovery and things like that. Needs more recovery and all that kind of stuff. And it's like a lot of times when guys, when you see an older guy come to the ring, it's not even the fact that they don't want it anymore. It's that they tried to pull it together in camp and they tried to pull it together to get to that moment. And it's just so much goes into it that they can't really pull it together. So I said, yeah, so who can we uh, attribute this, this not really comeback, but this 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 rebirth historic, yeah. historic legend in 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 in, in Nonito Donaire. <laughs> you say, yo, his wife's in the in the corner. And yep. it's like, yo, he's did whatever he has to ha had to have done at this point to really pull it together and be some young lions out there. So I really just want to give a, a, a hand clap to uh to Nonito and, and his entire team. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy what you saw because I know you did what you need to do now. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like. Hit that notification button. Check us out every week, every Tuesday, something new for you right here on the Port Away Podcast.